Hello everyone, today in this video tutorial I will uh, show you how to create a simple HTML page and uh, using localhost to retrieve the file on own, your own local machine uh, by using XAMPP and then finally I'm going to show you how you can FTP this file to your uh, web hosting and view the file on your web hosting. The software that I'm going to use is uh, Notepad++ as a text editor to create the HTML file. Uh, I use XAMPP software which contains Apache web server to host my file and I'm going to use Chrome browser to actually retrieve the file locally and uh, remotely and then finally I'm going to use FileZilla as an FTP client file transfer protocol to be able to transfer the file from my own computer to my hosting account. Let me go on and uh, open Notepad++ first. Okay, um, I'm going to create the HTML page first. Uh, we know that HTML5 page starts with the document type that indicates what standard we are using. It tells the browser we are using HTML5. So I start the document type tag first and then right away I save this file so I can have the benefit of using uh, text editor features of uh, highlighting HTML tags. So I go ahead and uh, I go to the C drive, I go where XAMPP is installed on C drive, I find XAMPP, uh, HGDocs is a public folder that is where you will store all your files that you want it to be accessible to localhost or your domain on your hosting account. So I go ahead, I create a folder here, I call it my site because I want to organize myself. I will separate my project by creating a, a folder and then I go inside my site. I name the file index.html because I know, uh, we all know that uh, index.html will become the home page of your website and it's going to be served automatically by uh, Apache because Apache by default is configured to look for index file and uh, serve the file. So I go ahead and save this. We know every document consists of two parts uh, that these two parts are all inside the document node tag HTML. Head is the very first part and then I have the body tag. So as you can see I open close the tag and then go inside and start coding. So uh, that's all for this. Now we know that in the head section we can have a few uh, few elements. Uh, the very first and important tag is called title. Uh, it's very important regarding SEO search engine optimization because uh, search engines will actually pay close attention to what you put in title. A uh, title element can contain up to 65 characters including uh, text. Uh, you put more than that, it's going to be truncated, it's not going to be shown. So I'm going to put the title here, spend a good quality time to actually write this title. Uh, so uh, I'll go ahead and say uh, create HTML page and uh, using ZAMP. Okay, so that's my title. Next, uh, we have a meta tag. We need to have a meta tag uh, for character set. Um, I'm going to use UTF-8 to be able to render different characters in English properly via the browser. Then I'm going to use uh, another information here, another meta. But before I go on, uh, let me let me tell you how important it is to have a proper title tag. If I go search on uh, Google, uh, let me just bring the browser here, and I go here and just type tutorial, right? And uh, I can see so many contents are coming up. Uh, so this part, what you see in the blue color is the title of the document. So if I just go to any of these pages, let me just go here. You see it says HTML tutorial W3 schools. And I view the source content. In the title section, I will see HTML tutorial as well, right? So titles are very important. And uh, the next one is, uh, the next content that I want to show you as is the uh, the text under the URL. This is what is generated by meta tag, uh, meta description. Uh, try your best to make this attractive so people mostly read these two line or sentence and then if they see the content is related to what they're looking for then they come to your page. So it's better to make sure this is uh, attractive. So go back here, I go ahead and create the next meta tag. Uh, meta tag and uh, this meta description. So I start with the name, is the attribute name, 
description and then uh, the other attribute is the content where it holds the content this page x explains how to create a HTML page uh, using XAMPP and how to upload the page to your hosting account. I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, it was 175 character max you could have for the meta description. You write more is going to get truncated as well. There is another meta tag that you can use that is not used by many search engines. Uh, it's called meta uh, keywords. So I'll go ahead, keywords is the name, and then we have the content. So for the content, you have to separate the keywords that is related to your document. Like in this case, it's going to be uh, HTML, uh, XAMPP, uh, FTP, hosting, and so on, right? Uh, as I said, this is not used by the modern search engine, but we still drop it there because some of the search engines still using this one to, uh, to identify what are the keywords in your document. And then finally, the body section of the document is where you actually put the content that you want to present it to your uh, visitor. So I'll go ahead and use a block tag H1. We know that the block tags are those tags that adds a new line before and after the tag. So H1 is one of them. Uh, heading 1. So I save this. Now is the time to go ahead and view this page. So I'm going, uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run ZAMP. So let's go ahead and search for ZAMP control panel. Um, now, so I click on start. And uh, as you can see, uh, I get an error. It says Apache uh, cannot run because it's a block board missing dependency and so on. Most of the time, this is the problem because uh, port 80 is used by another uh, application, right? Uh, so in this case, either you've got to find the application, it can be Skype, shut it down and run your uh, Apache, or you can simply go to configure, select the very first option, Apache HTTP d.config, the Apache configuration file. Uh, look for the directive listen, and this is default port 80, just change it to 800. Save the file, close it, and then start the Apache, it should run fine. So as you can see, Apache is running on port number 800. So I don't need this anymore, I just close it. And then I go here, and I'll use 127.0.0.1. Since I changed the port number, I just put the colon 800 at the end, and then hit enter. So as you can see, it just jumps to the ZAMP control panel. Um, now, since every IP can be associated to a domain, I can simply change the 127.0.0.1 to localhost colon 800. So they should go to the same place. I just hit the enter. As you can see, it goes there. So what I did is I, I have created a folder inside the HD docs. That's a public folder called my site. So as soon as you type the domain or the IP address, it directly goes to that default folder. In our case, it's HD docs and my site is there. So just go ahead and type my site. I should be able to see the content of the page I just have create so that's a page right so I can view this page on local machine and now what I want to do is I want to be able to upload this file uh, to my hosting account so I open FileZilla and for FileZilla to work uh, I just need the host name first uh, so I go ahead and I put the host name uh, then I will go ahead and put the username and then I will put the password now if you're uh, trying to run this FTP from school or any places that firewall forces people to use SFTP, you can simply put port 22. Otherwise, you do not mention the port number or it's optional to have 21 if you want it. So 21 is for FTP and 22 is for SFTP. So I just go ahead and click on uh, quick connect. Uh, public underscore HTML is the exact same as HE docs in a local machine. So I go ahead and here, I will go ahead and find the location of uh, the file that I had. It was inside C, uh, ZAMP. Let's see if I can find ZAMP. 
here it is. Now inside the app I have SG Docs. So the left side is my computer and the right side is my hosting account. So I go ahead and just select the my site folder and upload it. I could do the folder uh, right click and upload. I could drag and drop. If you have the file already on the server, it will ask you if it you want the, you want to overwrite it or not. Uh, I could just do a single file if I need to. I can go to my site here on my site as well and just select the file that I have uploaded. Uh, sorry, updated and upload it to the server. So let's go ahead and access the site. So the domain for this one is comp 1223.gblearn.com. So if I come over here, uh, since there is no index.html in that folder, I can simply see my site folder, the one just uploaded it. I click. So if you look at this right now, okay, let me see if I can get this one here. And this one here. Oh. Okay, let me see. Oh, what I'm doing here. So, if I go back here, I can simply see both pages one on local machine and the other one on my website. That's all you have to do to upload the file. So, have fun. Uh, put your question in the comment if you have one.